Johnny Holland. This is Harvey Weller at Tri Eastern Indemnity Associates here in New York. I think I know what you're calling about, Mr. Weller. You do? A little matter of a hundred thousand dollars in diamonds that disappeared from MacDilby's jewelry outfit down your way. Yes. Just got the word over the radio. Well, tell me, are you free to work on it? Have you thought of what my commission on that stuff will be if I manage to recover it for you? No, I hadn't, but now let me see. All right, you figure it out while I grab a plane. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri Eastern Indemnity Associates, New York City office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of. The hot chocolate matter. Expense account item one, sixteen forty-five. Taxi to Bradley Field and a plane to New York's Idlewild. Item two, five twenty for a cab to McGilby's house and jewels on Madison near Fifty Seven. The sign on the door said closed, so I walked in and joined a sad-faced mob of clerks and cops. Now just a minute, Mister. Did you see that sign? Johnny. Hi, Randy. I might have known the indomitable Lieutenant Randolph Singer would be in charge. Yeah, here I am. But how'd you find out about it so soon? It only happened two, three hours ago. Oh, never underestimate the power of radio, Randy. Now, what's the plot? Well, Johnny... Uh, here it is, Lieutenant Singer. Huh? Oh, oh, oh right, Mr. McDoby. Thanks. I... And if we find anything else missing that is not on that list... Yeah, you be sure and let me know. I certainly shall. Uh, Oh, uh, here, meet Johnny Dollar. He's a special investigator. Mr. Dollar? I'm very glad to see you, sir. How are you? Yeah, Johnny's a special investigator for the insurance uh, company. Yes, yes. I know all about him. But, uh, uh, Mr. Dollar, you can count on me as a great admirer of both you personally and the fine work that you do. Well, I thank you, Mr. Gilby. Now, perhaps we'll be able to get to the bottom of this. Now, if that's supposed to mean you didn't expect us to get to the bottom of it, McDilby... You heard the man, Randy? No, 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 of course not, Lieutenant. But I am glad that Mr. Dollar is here to work with you. Oh, oh, sure, sure, he'll be a lot of help. If you don't get in my way. If I don't... Now, at uh, about how do you figure the total loss, Mr. McDilby? Uh, Fush, I'm afraid it's close to $104,218.51 approximately. <laughs> approximately? Yeah, that's what it comes to on this list. Tell me, were there any witnesses to the robbery? I... Uh, have you had any word done for Mr. McDougan Luton? Yeah, I checked with Bellevue Hospital just before Johnny got here. And? Well, they doubt very much of the old man will pull through. Ah, terrible, terrible. My heart is filled with grief to hear that. Who is McDougan, Randy? The old night watchman. Whoever did this job came in just before opening time, tore him up with a thirty-eight, and then just helped himself. Hey, to approximately one hundred and four thousand two hundred... Yes, you, uh, you told me. Uh, How did he get in, Randy? I mean, after all, if there was a night watchman on duty... Aye, and a good one. McDuggan was not only a personal friend, but an old and very, very faithful employee. Well, there was no sign of tools on the doors or windows, Johnny, and the burglar alarm was still on, so either he somehow got hold of a key or McDuggan let him in. Somebody that McDuggan knew then. Possibility, all right. But now it looks like you'll never be able to tell us. Terrible. Now, who came in here and found out what had happened? Uh, you, Mr. McDuggan? No, sir. It was uh, Miss Tavish, my uh, chief clerk, who always opens up the store. Uh, would you like to have a word with her? Uh, later, maybe. Uh, these people here, are they all your employees? Yes, sir. Only one that's missing is Daniel Fairling, cleaning boy. Oh? Oh, don't worry, Johnny. I've already ordered a rundown on all of them and put out an APB on young Fairling. Well, you're improving, Randy. Well, thanks, pal. Now, does anybody beside you know the combination of the safe, Mr. McDuby? No, sir. But the safe wasn't touched. Do you mean that you left over $100,000 worth of stuff lying around out here in the showroom? Ordinarily, no, sir. But we closed up so late last night after a special sale we were having. And with McDuggan on the job. McDuggan's in Bellevue, hmm? Right, but now listen, Johnny. I'll yeah. see you later. Uh, Item three, a dollar even for a cab to Bellevue Hospital. 
as I stepped off the elevator at the fourth floor and started toward the door of McDuggan's room, a familiar young policeman was trying to hail a pretty young nurse at the other end of the corridor who misunderstood his intentions and was pointedly ignoring him. No, listen, baby, I'm not trying to make a pass on it. I'm busy, Buster. I, look, I only want you to... Oh, Dollar. Listen, am I glad to see you? Hi, Rogan, what's the trouble? Listen, the doc just left and he says McDuggan's got him so conscious again. Oh? Yeah. Only for a little while, see, though. Till a couple of minutes, maybe. There'll be curtains for him. Just about done. Have you notified Lieutenant Singer? Oh, no, no, no. He gave me orders to stay right here. When I tried to call that nurse, she thought, uh... Well, you know, she thought that maybe, uh... Sure. Look, Rogan, I'll tell you what we'll do. Yeah? You go down to the first floor to the main desk. There's a telephone there. I'll keep an eye on this room while you call the lieutenant and tell him to get over here. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, well, there ain't any phones on this floor? Well, if there was, at the far end of the corridor. You won't have to wait for an elevator. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, Dollar. Thanks a lot. Now, let's see. Mr. McDuggan? Mr. McDuggan, can you hear me? I ask. Ask. Yes? Ask. Ask somebody something? Who? Ask. Fairly. Fairling? Don. Donny Fairling. He did this to me. Ask. Donny. Mr. McDuggan. Mr. McDuggan. Nurse. Nurse. Get a doctor in here quickly. ever happened to you? You're driving down a long highway or working late, and then monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up with No Dose. No Dose keeps you alert with the same safe refresher found in coffee. Yet No Dose is faster, handier, more reliable, absolutely not habit forming. The safe way to stay alert without harmful time. No Dose. time, I tore on down the stairs to get to one of the phone booths I noticed on my way in, but as I reached the second floor landing... Oh, oh why don't you watch... Oh, Dollar. Listen, Rogan, did you get Randy Singer? Yeah, yeah. Lieutenant's coming right over, but, uh... Hey, you left old man McDougan alone? You get on back to him and hope he lives until Randy gets here. Oh, yes, sir. In the phone book, I found only one Daniel Fairling listed. Item four, another dollar for another cab to a shabby apartment building in a section the other side of the Williamsburg Bridge, not too far from the dock that lined that side of the East River. The push button to find the name Sterling in the outer lobby didn't work. Then I found that the front door was open. I went in, up a rickety stairway, to start looking for apartment 3B. Yeah, I'll see now. I'll see now. Danny? Danny, open up. Danny Fairling? Hey, what's the racket? What's all the noise? What's the matter with you? I'm uh, looking for Mr. Daniel Fairling. Well, you won't find him here. What? Only his missus. He moved out. Oh, to where? Only it looks like they're going to patch things up again like they always do, and then he'll be back. What do you mean? Some fancy delivery boy was here a while ago, delivering a box of fancy chocolates to us. That's what I mean. So, if you ask me, I... You know where I can find him? Well, he works to one of them fancy jewelry stores up on Madison Avenue. But why don't you ask her? Well, I did, but there's no answer. Well, I didn't see her go out, so knock some more. Well, I'll try, but I don't know if... What was that? What was it? Inside the apartment. Do you have a key? No, sir. And the landlady, she's out. What was that? I don't know. While I break in the door, get to a phone, will you, and call the police? You're going to break down the door? Yes, go on. Will you please? Yeah. Go on. Okay. Oh, damn it. No. Oh. wasn't pretty. The bomb had been inside the box of candy. It had gone off from a failing woman had opened it, plastering the wall, ceiling, and floor with bits of chocolate. As for Mrs. Failing, young or old, beautiful, or homely, nobody can tell now. Okay, okay. I called the cops, mister, and they're coming right over. All right, good. Will you stay here until they arrive? Yeah, but, but did you find out what the... Oh! Oh, no! Oh! 
she was such a pretty one, too. Item five, ten cents for a phone call to Lieutenant Singer's office at the 18th Precinct. Yeah, 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 Johnny, I got there. But just in time to watch old McDuggan die. And without saying a word. So, what about you? Did you have any luck when you saw him? He was able to say only one thing to me, Randy. Yeah? What was it? The name of that cleaning man that MacDilby mentioned to us this morning. The one that's missing? Danny Fairley? Uh-huh. But all he said about him was... Well, then we're in luck. We're really in luck. Why do you say that? Hop in a cab and get on over here. Look, Randy. You'll see, Johnny. You'll see. Now come on over here and as fast as you can. Item six, a dollar ninety for a cab to the 18th Precinct headquarters. <laughs> well, I've always told you we don't waste any time around here, Johnny. First rundown we made was on that fairly. Mm-hmm. When we found that that Danny boy had a record. Oh, as long as your arm. So, Natch, we put out the word on him. And you know when the boys downtown picked him up? When, Randy? About the same time you and I were talking there in the Dilby shop. You know, where'd they find him? Oh, some old room in the house way downtown. They didn't try his apartment? Well, sure, but his wife said he and she were on the outs and told them where to find him. And if they hadn't left, they might have saved their lives. What? A box of candy blew up in her face, Randy, when she opened it. Oh. Don't, uh, don't worry about it, though. It's, it's out of your belly. Oh, now, just a minute, Johnny. Come on, I, um, I want to talk to this Danny. But listen, do the police in that precinct know about his wife? Yes, they know. There's nothing you can do about it from here. We'll see. Well, in here, Johnny. All right. Open up, Joe. Yes, sir. Well... Here's our boy. You're talking about me, Flash, but I demand to know where you're holding. What kind of grounds have you got? Fairling, I demand to know what you did with all those goodies you took from your boss's jewelry store, and the quicker you start talking, the better for you. That's a fact. Yeah? Now, who are you? My name is Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny Dollar, huh? The big insurance guy. Well, if you think I made that heist, you're just as dumb as the cops. I'd like to see them prove it. I'd like to see them prove anything. Now, when are you going to let me out of this stinking place? It'll take the best lawyer in town to get you out of here, Fairling. Now, don't you worry. Don't you worry about that. When the time comes, I'll have a lawyer. I'll have a lawyer that'll make a monkey out of you guys. Can't prove a thing on me. If you didn't pull the high, Danny. Oh, now, Johnny. How come you didn't show up at the store this morning? Because I was late getting there. And when I saw the mob and heard what happened, well, you think I was going to hang around and beg for a pinch? Me? With my record? Did MacDilby know about your record when he hired you? You mean I should go around blabbing about it? Oh, you're real cute, Dollar. Danny. Now, look. I'm fed up to here with you guys. Why don't you leave me alone, huh? Or else send me out of here. Sing the bit about his wife on Johnny now, don't you, Randy? What? What'd you guys say? Danny, if you didn't pull that job, do you have any idea about who might have? Well, sure, like maybe everybody who works in that joint. Do you know anything? No. Well, that's all now. You all through with me. There's a standard offer that I'm authorized to make. If you can and will furnish information that will lead to the arrest and conviction of the guilty party and recovery of the merchandise, the insurance company will give you the best legal assistance possible. Now, isn't that sweet of them? All right, Randy, let's go. the picture, Randy. Okay, okay, Johnny, but the boys from that precinct are going to want to be asking him a lot of questions about it. Well, just don't let them know that you have him yet. Not until I have time to check this a little bit more. Hmm? Yeah? Why? Because if Danny is guilty of that robbery... And the murder. ...of the robbery, maybe the shock of finding out about his wife will open him up if it's used at the right time. Which is when? Let me worry about that, Randy. Meantime, we'll be finding out if your boys have uncovered anything new back at the shop. Johnny. Yep. Are you holding back something on me? Like what? Like what maybe old man McDuggan said to you there at Bellevue? All he said was, ask Danny. Ask Danny Fairling. And to me, that says we're holding the right man. Well, I wouldn't bank on it, Randy. You have a better idea, Johnny? For both the robbery and the murder? Yes, I have an idea. And I don't like it. Treat your taste kindly with cats. 
Treat your taste kindly with Kenta. Treat your taste kindly with Kenta. Smoke Kenta, the micronized filter cigarette. Yes, people who want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes know that the one to switch to is Kent. And there's a very good reason why. Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor. Refines away rough taste for the mildest taste of all. Yes, that's your reward for smoking Kent, the cigarette that made the filter famous. So when you want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes, remember, the finer the filter, the milder the taste. And you'll decide to treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the micronite filter cigarette. finished the recheck, Mr. Dollar, and my loss is just exactly as I stated to you previously. Is it permissible to open up no for what little is left of the day's business? Well, I don't see why not. Let's wait a little, Randy. A couple of things I'd like to check on. Oh, now, Johnny, you know that my boys have covered everything. Do you have any uh, notions, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, we sure have. That cleaning boy of yours, Danny Fairley. Young Danny? Do you think like this? Young Danny. Yeah. Oh, for no, I can't believe it. And that ain't all he did. Oh, but he couldn't. And yet, perhaps. What do you mean, perhaps? That crook and killer now has a record a mile long. Aye. Then perhaps it was Danny. But can you prove it against him? It might be a little harder to prove than the lieutenant thinks. You mind if I look around a little? Oh, I'll be glad to show you anything and everything. Well, there's no point in taking your time if you're getting ready to open up again. No, no, he's perfectly all right. Miss, perhaps you can help me. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Tavish, uh, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dollar? You'll be kind enough to show him anything he likes? Uh, That'll be a pleasure, Mr. Dollar. All right. Then let's get to work. I was sure that Randy's men had done a good job, but I had to follow through on this idea that was bugging me. And that meant looking for something, anything to back it up. And then I found it in a small cleaning closet in the back. Ah, how did this box of chocolates get in here? Oh, well, you know, chocolates were the young Danny's weakness, Mr. Dollar. They were? Hmm? <laughs> Simply loved to nibble on chocolate candy all day long. And so whenever he'd do an errand or a special favor for one of us, we'd buy him a box of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, those French ones are his favorite. Uh, the sort he, he couldn't really afford. The address on this box? Yeah. All right, Miss Tavish. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You've been more help than you may realize. Well, why not anything, Johnny? Plenty. I'll see you later. Hmm? Where are you going? To a candy shop over on Fifth Avenue. Candy shop? Mm-hmm. Then, with your permission, Randy, I want to see Danny Fairling again. Well, sure. Alone. Mais oui, monsieur. We did deliver a box of our excellent chocolate to that address this morning. Just chocolate, hmm? I remember it well, monsieur. Now, tell me. Because the gentleman who made the purchase last evening took them with him but then came back later and asked if we deliver them today. How much later? Oh, uh, perhaps an hour. Mm-hmm. Plenty of time to open the box, take out some of the candy. Uh, tell me this. That customer, was he a small, tough-looking young fellow? Oh, no, monsieur. He was a well-dressed English or a Scottish gentleman. Thank you, my friend. You've just helped me solve a murder. Murder? Or I should say two. <laughs> Okay, Danny, you can say you don't know all you like. But I'm convinced that McDoby himself killed McDuggan and pulled that robbery. Oh, you are, huh? Yes, I thought of that as a possibility the minute I learned the place hadn't been broken into, that it had to be somebody McDuggan knew and knew well and let in there. And just how are you going to prove that? I'm also sure that you were part of the plan. Ah, you're not. That instead of getting there late, you got to that shop early this morning. That you saw McDoby, saw what he did. Because you knew what he was up to, you were there to give yourself a handle for some blackmail if he didn't come through for you. 
because he told you to stay away this morning, to stay at home. That would put you on the spot, Danny, wouldn't it, because of your record, and immediately remove any suspicion from him. Am I right, Danny? All right. Don't say it, not yet. But that was the deal, wasn't it? Neither you nor anybody else have got a thing on me. I know. I know there's no direct evidence against you, Danny, any more than there is against McDoobie. That's the reason he promised that if you play along with him, he'd not only give you a cut of a loop, but make sure that you had legal help that would keep you out of the pen. Isn't that what he promised you, Danny? I, I, well, I, come on, you can't deny that, can you? Do you think for a minute he was going to keep any such promise? When you and ex-con made such an easy whipping boy when nobody cared what happened to you? No, Danny. McDoby had other plans for you so that you'd end up like McDuggan did on a slab. You haven't thought of that, had you? No, 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 no. no you, you're, you're crazy, Tommy. You're crazy. Am I? Well, what about your wife, Danny? What do you mean about my wife, huh? What do you mean about her? What's a little family argument got to do with this? Maybe a lot. So what if maybe I did walk out in Pearl for a couple of days? This isn't the first time I did that, but... I was going back to her, like I always do, because I, I love her, you see. So what about her, huh? Now, why are you bringing her into this? You, uh, you like chocolate, don't you, Danny? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I do. So what? Especially the French kind. Okay, okay, so what? And McDoby didn't know that you'd moved out on your wife. So why should he, him or anybody else? So he thought that you would be there at the apartment this morning, didn't he? Yeah, 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 maybe so, but so what? What's that got to do with Pearl? Now, look, start making sense, That's Dollar. That's the reason he sent the box of chocolates there. Huh? The box, Danny. Uh, so that makes him a crook of me, an accessory? Danny, the box had a bomb in it. What? A bomb? Yes. It killed her. Pearl. Pearl. because of his testimony and my testimony. Spence count total, including the ride back to Hartford, 49.35. And uh, don't forget the commission. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, high adventure in the colorful romantic gold rush country it can also be very deadly. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Do you like a car with plenty of pep? A car with reserve power for safe passing? Most good drivers do. But they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular price Sinclair Dino gasoline matches performance of premium gasoline, saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair Dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Jackson Beck, Sam Gray, Gil Mack, Bill Lipton, Guy Rep, Betty Gard, Ivor Francis, and Vicky Bola. Music supervision by Eugene Sine. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical supervision, Mike Schotzer. Be sure to join us next week. Same time, same station for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hanna speaking. Keep in instant touch with world events through this net alert station of the CBS Radio Network.